Do you agree that guy on Rick's channel is a bell end? Okay, now you've all probably tuned in because of the title of this video and I'm gonna get to that question. But before that, I have a couple more to get through. I put out a QA and a a few weeks ago and originally went to Madeira and filmed some of the answers that didn't quite come out properly uh, with the audio and the lighting and stuff. So I've got the best five that I'm gonna go through right now, obviously finishing with the one that you've clicked for. I've not just got like a short answer for that one, so I wanna get into that one at the end. To kick things off, Check Spy 5124. What's the best and worst experience you've had as a YouTube golfer? Now, best experience is just getting away, going on trips and finding either subscribers or pros. And it's usually always the first time I met these people. So just meeting new people, having matches with them, bringing it to life on YouTube. Really enjoy that. So that is, that is a collection of good experiences. Worst experience. I've had as a YouTube golfer uh, would be entering a professional golf tournament this year and uh, not getting paid. Right, Ross Kennedy won. How often do you practice speed training and do you just hit a certain amount of balls going for club at speed or ball speed? Cheers. Right, so speed training I do not as frequently as I probably should. So I've spoke to a lot of the long drive guys. From what I've gathered from Owen Meads, Luke Curtis, Joe Miller, who are all under Lee Cox, um, and he's well, arguably one of the best long drive, arguably the best long drive coach in the world, uh, down to his record and his knowledge. Basically, what they do is get warmed up, which is very important because they're going to be going all out. But once they're warmed up, it's just a case of swinging, usually swinging into a net because they're not interested in seeing where the ball's going and not having any fear of where the ball's going. It's just literally a club head speed, a club head speed session. And they'll essentially just work up to the fastest club head speed that they can manage in a session. The goal really is just to keep pushing through their boundaries and break in their PBs. And that is how a speed session works with the long drive guys. Russell Partridge, 4615. What would a young James Walcher concentrate on more regarding his game? Keep up the good work. Um, yeah, so what I do from a young age is, see, I, I made the mistake. I got to four handicap when I was four handicap when I was 14. Basically, after that, from there until yeah, the age of sort of like 18. I didn't really have a consistent coach. Sort of had a few lessons here and there with, you know, the Devon coaches, random bits and bobs, and a lot of it I tried to do myself. So if I could go back and what I'd do when I was young, I'd find a really good coach that's got a proven track record with good players, and I would see him regularly. Uh, and it'd be as simple as that. Find a good coach, see him regularly, trust him, and, uh, and just work at it. Two more questions. I know the one you're uh, waiting for. Baked Bean, what's your goal in terms of competitive golf? Where do you think you can get to? On the content side, you will eventually blow up. Edit, mean that in a good way. Taking it in a good way, thank you very much. The goal of competitive golf, and this sort of leads into the next question, but we'll get to that in a minute. The goal really, as it has been from the start, is just to keep pushing and just continually evolve as a golfer and to see how much better I can get. Like, I don't have a specific goal in the future. I want to be playing on this tour. I want to win a certain tournament. I'm just trying to continually improve my golf. And since I've been focusing on my golf over the last couple of years, it's it's definitely improved quite a bit. So to summarize that question, just to continually improve is the goal. Elliot Smith is giving it some with this question. Do you find it difficult to come up with new different video? I mean, let's be honest, right? The bit of the question that you want me to answer is, is at the end. So let's get to this bit because it's not a simple yes, no answer. Uh, so Elliot Smith 4246 asks, do you agree that Guy on Rick's channel is a bellend? Strong with the question. Now, I obviously don't know Guy and uh, I've never met Guy. I'm sure he's a nice guy. <laughs> to be honest, I don't find myself consuming that much golf content. So I haven't really listened to much of Rick Shields' podcast, and I know he's the co-host. But one thing I found slightly off was his take a few years ago, because a few years ago, I was mentioned sort of like as an afterthought on uh, on their podcast. It was when Rick was, sorry, it was when Pete was doing his Road to the Open, probably got the name of that wrong, series in which he was trying to improve his golf 
all through the winter, leading up to open qualifying, into open qualifying, and just see how well he could have done. He documented the playlist, I thought it documented the series, I thought it's great. And Guy essentially called Pete out on the podcast. And his opinion was, I don't really see the point in people like Pete entering open qualifying because really then they're, they're never going to play in the open to what is the point in trying. And I was sort of mentioned as an afterthought in that podcast, which was, yeah, James is another one. Like, I just don't see him like ever doing well enough to get in the open, um, which I didn't really feel like was a very positive stance to take. Now, a couple of years ago, my golf wasn't in as good a place as it is now. When I first started trying to get better as a professional golfer and entering these tournaments, yeah, I was slightly out of depth. But the attitude that Guy had towards it was like a very defeatist one. It was like, if you don't feel like there's a very good chance of you achieving something, don't try. Which is a strange angle to take, especially when you're probably speaking to a lot of junior golfers on his podcast. Really didn't feel like it is a very responsible angle to take. Sort of discouraging and just outing someone for trying to do something. Um, I don't know, it just seems like a bit of a strange take to me. Three, four years ago, when I was really starting this whole get better at golf thing, all I wanted to do was try to get better and document it. That's, that's all I've tried to do ever since. As a result of not listening to opinions like that, it has come quite a long way because I remember at the start, like I was entering tournaments and some of them, you know, really struggling putting it out there, being open and honest about it. And I feel like a lot of people appreciate it, but it also left me open to a lot of people. Um, let's, let's not say a lot. There's like a few comments saying, um, you know, just negative stuff, as you could imagine. Now, if I was to listen to that at the time, and uh, that would have put me off, I wouldn't have got to the point I'm at now. And I'm not like trying to give a speech here like I've won the fucking claret jug, but my golf has come a long way because I wasn't worried about people's opinions at that time. Because at the start, sometimes you're going to be a long way away from where you need to be. But if you don't actually get started and you don't test yourself, then really, how are you going to learn? Like, that's all part of the process. So someone calling someone out for trying is, like I said, defeatist, defeatist and discouraging. And not really the positive take that you'd expect from, from a Rick Shields podcast because he you know, from what I've seen, that's not really what he's about. Now, the other thing to mention, and what he probably fails to see from this, is that a lot of people need something that is slightly out of reach to work towards in order to find meaning, because having that meaning and something to work towards, that keeps a lot of people out of trouble. And that, by out of trouble, I mean, being, you know, hedonistic and getting on the sesh, doing things that you shouldn't be doing that really offer nothing in return. A lot of people need something like a, a mountain to climb, metaphorically, to keep them on the straight and narrow and to, to keep them on a good path. So I definitely wouldn't discourage anyone to try anything as long as you're openly, and as long as you're honestly working towards something that's gonna be good then you're on the right path, in my opinion. And I would never discourage anyone to try something, especially out and I'm on a podcast that gets, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, sort of a low blow. Um, so to summarize the question, do you think Guy is a bellend? Personally, I don't know him. I don't care for him, but I thought that his take on that in particular was just pretty poor. That's not like, try and put each other down let's try and bring each other up it's much it's much better trying to be a positive community rather than you know just slagging someone off and calling guy a bellend so i wouldn't do that but anyway thanks for watching the content recently lots of decent course vlogs have been on the channel recently if you haven't seen them check them out we got um i'm actually in filming in the southwest this week so probably flower the map conig all the old favorites going to be filming that content will be up over the next few weeks so keep your eyes peeled and uh, don't be a bellend.